Like always, you can follow along with all of the code I'm about to show you by checking out my GitHub page at this link. I'm going to go ahead and start by importing pandas and aliasing that as PD. And my version of pandas is 2.1.1. Next, I'll load in some data, and I'm loading this in via URL. You can check out my read CSV video if you'd like to know more about that step. But this data is coming from my GitHub page, and it's called pet underscore data dot CSV. Let's take a look at the top part of that data frame. In this data set, I have various different names for pets, the pet type, the food that they eat, and the amount, and sometimes a brand. In this video, I'll illustrate dropping duplicate values with this data set. First of all, there are several missing values in this data set, so I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple of rows that have completely missing values, so the entire row is blank. And we're left with 496 different rows in this data set. And you can check out my past drop in A video if you'd like to know more about that step. But now what we're left with, every row in DF has at least one value. Okay, so let's try to find some duplicate rows. In pandas, there's a method called duplicated for exactly this purpose. So if I execute that on my data frame, you'll see that I get a bunch of trues and falses. So this is basically saying, is this row a duplicate of one that you've already seen or not? So I can go over here and use this as a mask. This basically just picks out all of the rows that are duplicated and leaves off all the ones that aren't. So you see I have four different rows here, Cooper the guinea pig and so on. But it looks like these aren't really duplicates yet. So what's happened is this duplicated method is actually just giving us one of those duplicate values. If you'd like to see both of them, you can do keep equals false, and that will give you both rows that are duplicated. Now you see that I have two Cooper the guinea pigs, number 28, index number 28, as well as index number 242. So duplicated is giving me all of the rows that are exact matches of each other. So even all the way down to the food type that Cooper uses is exactly matched in this other row. If I'd like to drop these duplicates, I can use a method called drop duplicates. Here's how that works. I just reference my data frame and then I say drop underscore duplicates. Executing that, now I'm down to 492 rows and I've dropped four of those duplicate rows. So basically this drop duplicates in its natural form is just going to get rid of one of these duplicate rows and keep the other one. So we'll just have one Cooper the guinea pig instead of having two. Let's go ahead and copy this and save this as a new data frame. Let's call it no dupes. And if we try that same uh, masking with the duplicated, we're going to now see that I don't have any duplicate values. Let me show you how that works. Duplicated. Now we'll actually see nothing. There are no duplicated rows in this data frame. But just keep in mind that this, by its default, drop duplicates is getting rid of rows that are exact matches of each other. You would have to have the same value in all five columns in order to be considered a duplicate with this drop duplicates default state. Now let's level up our drop duplicates knowledge by subsetting on the columns we want, keeping only the duplicates we need, and using in place to make our changes permanent. Okay, so I said that drop duplicates is only going to drop rows with exact matches in all five columns, but sometimes you'd like to drop duplicates based on a specific column or columns and not all five columns. Okay, so here's how that works. Here's our top part of our data frame. Let's say that we only want animals with unique names. So let's say that we only want one Simba in the entire uh, data set. We don't want a bunch of them. Okay, so the problem right now is that if we take a look at name, which is that first column, and we check the value counts, meaning I'm just tallying up how many uh, of each of those names exist, I have 18 different Charlies, right, and 18 different Lunas. And all the way down, there's, there's just a ton of these, these different animals with the same names. So if I'd like to have um, a data set where every pet has a unique name and drop all of the other ones, I can use drop duplicates to do that as well. So let's go ahead and use that drop duplicates again. But this time uh, we're going to add an argument here. Let's say subset equals name. All right. So this basically just says um, I want you to drop any duplicate names from the data set. 
So I only want there to be one Lulu and one Loki, etc. And so let's make sure that that has actually worked. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this. And what we're going to do is now check that name column again, and we'll do value counts. We should have just a value count of one for every single name. And that's exactly what we have. Great, so if you do have a particular column where you don't want there to be duplicate um, names or whatever it's going to be, phone numbers, et cetera, you can use the subset to subset out the column that cannot have duplicates in it. It's also possible to subset on multiple items if we'd like. So here again is the top part of the data frame. Let's say I'd like to only have one lizard that is named Simba. I can have other animals that are named Simba, like a dog named Simba, etc. but I can only have one lizard that is named Simba, and so on. So what I would do now is once again use the drop duplicates uh, method. I'm gonna subset once again, but now instead of just passing one column string name, I'm going to pass a list of columns. So in this case, we only want one of each name, pet type combination. All right, great, so that produced 323 rows. And just to verify that, I can copy this, paste it down here, and I'll do value counts once again, but I'm going to do it on both of these columns. All right, great, so this produces a multi-index, and it's telling me that there's only one Bailey the bird, one Oscar the lizard, etc. And there are multiple pennies, uh, there's a guinea pig and a fish and a ferret, but there's only one of each pet type. So if you have two columns that represent something unique and you only want one of that combination of columns, you can use subset with a list. And I find this really helpful for data analysis and data science. Um, for example, let's say you had a first name column and a last name column. Maybe you only want one unique row for every first and last name combination. You could use subset and pass in a list. So in some cases, it might be important to say which duplicate should be kept. Okay, so here's, here's the scenario. Let's say that we've used this drop duplicates once again, and we're just going to subset on the name. Okay, so if we scroll down here, let's take a look. We have Zoe the ferret, uh, who is ID number five. And so what we've actually done, this by default, this um, drop duplicates, is going to keep the first instance that it finds. So the first time it sees Zoe, it's going to keep that row. And then any other time that it finds Zoe after that, it will drop that row. But you can switch that if you'd like. So let's try one more time. Let's do drop duplicates again. We're going to pass in subset equals name. So we're only going to have one animal with each name. But this time let's use another argument called keep. And we'll set that equal to last. What this says instead is only keep the last instance of that particular name. So if we scroll through these different names, we'll find Zoe once again, but now Zoe is a hamster. So, and, and she has ID number 429. So this is only keeping the very last instance that it sees in the data frame, and that could be helpful. Let's say that you've got these values sorted by time. Um, maybe you wanna keep the first instance you know, that you've seen a name, or maybe you wanna keep the last instance to keep your records fresh. So this keep argument can be really helpful for situations like that. Finally, there is one more option within this keep argument. So let's do drop duplicates again and subset by name. We could also set keep equal to false. This will actually give us nothing. And that's because keep equals false means that we don't wanna keep any of the duplicates. Anytime we see a name repeated, we're gonna drop all instances of that name. And in this case, the data frame, uh, if we take a look at the value counts, remember that none of the names were unique. So because we see every single name at least two times, we're gonna drop everything from the data frame if we use keep equals false. However, this is still a really useful option if you have a data set, like let's say you're collecting emails from people and anytime you see duplicate emails, maybe you think that something fishy is going on. So you just wanna get rid of all of those from your database. You could use keep equals false to drop all of those rows. Finally, just like a lot of other pandas methods, um, drop duplicates does not make permanent changes to your data frame. So if I take a look at the shape of my data frame again, I still have 496 rows. And if I take a look at this drop duplicates, now this is where we're dropping everything that has exactly the same, uh, I would get rid of four of those rows. 
Um, so we haven't actually made any of those changes permanent at this point. If we would like to do so, we can use within drop duplicates an argument called in place, which is the same as a lot of other pandas methods. We'll just set that equal to true. This now doesn't present you with any return object because it's changed your underlying data frame. DF itself is different. So if I take a look at the shape of DF now, I'm down to 492 rows, which means my drop duplicates that I just did here within place did make underlying changes to DF and it got rid of four of those rows. So thanks so much for watching today and I hope you learned a lot about drop duplicates. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel where I'll be posting more videos just like this one. See you then. Droplicates.